the Boys and Girls Club of Atlanta City is under new leadership. We learn more about the new CEO and his plans to continue to prepare youth for a better future. It's all here on the next Latino Motion. Join us. Latino Motion with Bert Lopez is presented by Latino Motion Public Affairs Media, a New Jersey nonprofit corporation, and Stockton University. This edition of Latino Motion with Bert Lopez is brought to you by the HD Studios at the campus of Stockton University. Funding for Latino Motion is provided by Atlantic Care. For more information, call one eight eight eight. 569-1000 or visit atlanticare.org. Atlantic City Electric, energy for a changing world, and South Jersey Gas. Welcome to Latino Motion, a weekly interview show highlighting issues impacting New Jersey's Latino community while advancing understanding of Latino cultural heritage and contributions to our society. And here is your host, Bert Lopez. Buenos dias and welcome to Latino Motion. The Boys and Girls Club of Atlanta City is under new leadership, and I'm pleased to have the new Chief Executive Officer, Dr. Wallace. Dr. Wallace, welcome to Latino Motion. Thank you. Gracias. Glad to be here. Gracias. Well, <laughs> and tú hablas un poquito de español, ¿verdad? Poco, poco. Un poco. <laughs> yeah, I, I know uh, Dr. Wallace has been uh, a short period. You got here at, as a leader of a, a, a very exclusive club, the Boys and Girls Club of Atlanta City. Uh, that's very meaningful uh, for the community and certainly for, for the, the children uh, there in Atlanta City. Uh, I think it's a great opportunity here to, for folks to get to know you a little better. And I know you have a very extensive background serving the community. Please tell us a little more. Well, great. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you for having me and inviting me. Yes, I've been in Atlantic City at Boys and Girls Club now for uh, eight months. Okay. Uh, so I had a great summer and experience to be able to see our operations and how we're serving the youth of Atlantic City. Um, you know, I see my my position and appointment to be the CEO of the Boys and Girls Club as uh, just a fulfillment of my calling and purpose, uh, you know, to be able to serve and help others. I've had a career in uh, the nonprofit space, uh, serving others, being a servant leader for, for a while. I came here from Homefront, a homeless shelter up in uh, Ewing. I was there during COVID and so was able to experience and had to transition um, st and still being able to provide services um, to, to those who need us the most. Uh, prior to that, I was with the Puerto Rican Action Board in New Brunswick, a large organization, social services that covered everything from weatherization to preschool yes. um, and, 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 and providing uh, food bank services. And so um, my life has been committed to serving and helping others. And I'm ecstatic and excited to be here in Atlantic City to uh, service the Boys and Girls Club. So before we go into uh, the Boys and Girls Club, uh, just comparing the communities, right? Uh, uh, you worked uh, in, in Newark, uh, um, in uh, New Brunswick, and other places up North Jersey. You're here down in Atlanta County, in Atlanta City, and not as big as those other uh, uh, communities, but still face some of the very same challenges. Tell me a little bit about the comparison and uh, what you see that's different here. Oh, absolutely. Um, it, it, I don't necessarily, as far as the people that we serve, the, the dip, there's really not a difference because need is need. Right. And, you know, our job and, and, and purpose is to help those who are in need. And one of the biggest, you know, our vision as a Boys and Girls Club is, and again, to help those who need us the most. Uh, we, we see some of the same challenges spread throughout demographically, um, be it education, uh, the need for education. You know, our vision and purpose is youth development. Our goal is to help youth become their best self. And so, you know, we provide academic enhancement, we provide exposure to STEAM, uh, the sciences and the math and, and the arts. And so uh, we, our goal at the end of the day is to be able to, to, to develop and, and form whole, whole children, holistic kids um, that will become uh, contributing citizens. 
And I know you've, like you mentioned, uh, you're involved with the Latino community up in New Brunswick uh, and making that transition here. Obviously, uh, Boys and Girls Club, particularly the Chelsea Club, has a lot of Latinos to yes. participate. Yes. Uh, Chelsea is a special club. I, I love it. It's been there for, you know, we've been here in Atlantic City for over 50 years. Uh, the Chelsea Club is special uh, to me. I, I love our kids there. Our, our director, Clara uh, Hernandez-Gill, is absolutely amazing. Uh, the community does not know, but she was a finalist for uh, a national award for leadership, um, which is just, it's, for me, that was great to be able to recommend her and for her to be recognized or at least to be considered. Uh, she has been a, a, a member of the club as a child and now she's a director, and so she's leading it. Uh, we need more space there, it's growing. Uh, we're expanding programs for teens in that area and community. Uh, you know, we're looking for space. We're looking to see how we can either acquire more space so we can build and go up and, and provide full services um, to, the, to the children in that area of Chelsea. And you just mentioned that success story uh, as a club member who's now a leader in the yes. organization. But there've been a lot of success stories with the Boys and Girls Club. Uh, and even some nationally. Tell us more about that. Uh, one of the biggest things was recognizing uh, our STEAM uh, lab, uh, which was uh, sponsored by uh, Apple. Uh, the previous administration uh, did a great job in, in securing those funds and, and this, with the help of the senator and some other uh, donors in the area. And, and we're very appreciative of that. Uh, one of the things that we have been known for is our workforce development. And, and helping children, uh, members, children, uh, be able to get acquire skills in various uh, industry trades. One of the things that once they complete the training, uh, they will receive industry recognized certifications. Uh, one in culinary, uh, serve safe, serve safe manager. So we have people who haven't finished high school that have passed uh, the serve safe manager testing, which means they can go work in most restaurants in the city. That's very important. And be qualified. Right. And so, uh, and we're working on other uh, skills as well, other certifications as well, um, OSHA certifications. Um, we're working one now with drone and Google. And so we wanna be able to give, enhance them um, so they can have, receive, we're partnering with the schools. Right. And so we wanna just enhance what the school is doing and give them a little bit more. Now, I know you mentioned a lot about some of the aspects of different programs, and now we're gonna get into that a little bit. Um, but I know that nationally, uh, uh, Boys and Girls Club have touched many individuals. I believe Delzell Washington was one of them. Yes. You have football players that have been through the, the club. Why do you think it's so important for kids to be involved in an organization such as the Boys and Girls Club? That's a great question. I think one of the things that I realized is that um, kids are craving structure. And we went through a lot with COVID and the trauma of COVID and the separation and the isolation. And now they're having to acclimate to come back out. And so if your kids have been introverts they and, and not communicating and, and talking, we give them a space now that we're able to, they're able to engage uh, peers. Um, and it's been a challenge for a lot of them to to become acclimated, to to be able to work with others, to have teams, uh, collaborations with each other. And so we've we've really noticed that. Um, and I think one of the things that sets us apart is that we're really focusing on mental health uh, and, and, and addressing trauma. Uh, there was so much trauma that happened with uh, COVID that a lot of times people just don't recognize it. But we're recognizing it. Uh, one of the things that we're going to start focusing on is advanced childhood experiences called ACEs. Mm -hmm. um, if we can address that before they're the age of 18, uh, I think we're able to give the world a better citizen. And so uh, we have a lot of programs. We have a director of behavioral health. And so we're, we're very, we're keenly uh, aware and we, we look and we discern uh, what's hap happening with, with our kids. Yeah, uh, so if they come and we can see they're sort of distracted, you know, we, we, have, we offer them an outlet. And that's very important. For full disclosure, my son is a club member at the Chelsea Club. Uh, I'm one of those old guys with a young child, right? My, yes. child, uh, my son is 12 years old, but uh, he really enjoys it. And uh, I think that's part of the, the, the success, right? That it's not just uh, coming to a club where you just do homework, right? It's, right? There's other aspects of it that makes it fun for the children, still learn and, and still get something very meaningful out of it. I appreciate what you're just mentioning about mental health, which is yeah. very, very important. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, we can't, it's, it is a national issue. 
And so it needs to be addressed. Uh, a lot of donors and funders now are really focusing on mental health. And so uh, we've been able to, um, so we're, we've, we've written some grants, we're waiting on the answer that we can even enhance and, and make more things available uh, in regards to that space in, of mental health and sensory. And so uh, it, our director's done a great job, Latoya McClone has done a great job in, in setting that program up. And so we're, we're excited what, what lies ahead. And I know many parents leave it up to the school uh, to do all that, but it, this is certainly beyond just what the school is able to provide. Oh, absolutely. And you do link very closely with the, with the schools. Absolutely. Partnership with them, uh, Atlantic City Board of Education, um, and has been vital, you know, and being able to uh, share information and partner and partner Which for the very, success Which is very, very critical. We want to talk about those partnerships and the other things you're doing at the club. We're going to okay. take a quick break. We'll be right back with more Latino Motion. Welcome back to Latino Motion. We continue our discussion with Dr. Charles Wallace. He's the Chief Executive Officer for the Boys and Girls Club of Atlanta City. Dr. Wallace, we were talking about the, the, you know, the Boys and Girls Club as far as it being impactful for, for many of the youth and uh, the benefits. Um, let's talk a little bit about, because you have a, a, a vast variety, right? You have the young kids. It's easy, or easier, I should say, to mm -hmm. get them engaged. Um, and then when you get into the teenagers, you know, they're harder to get engaged. You see parents bringing their kids at a younger age to uh, the, the classroom. They, when they get older, they don't want their parents to walk them to school, right? So, right. so there's that, 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 that whole dynamics that uh, your club has to take in place. And I think you accounting for that through the teen center. Tell me more about that. Well, yeah, we have two, two clubs, the Boys and Girls Club of America. We service kids aged 16 to eight, 6 to 18, uh, and we uh, divide them up. Uh, so we have our teen center, ages 13 to 18, and we focus on things that, that will help teens grow and, and mature. Mm -hmm. And so we offer programming that uh, workforce development, like I mentioned earlier, we have arts, um, arts and craft that lets them be able to express their artistic side. Uh, but again, we'd be able to give them experience and in, in, in different type programs. We have smart girls, we have passport to manhood, uh, we have uh, a plan for adulthood. And those are literal conversations and curriculum that we have that it was able to um, mentor our kids, um, but also give them a voice and also give them an outlet or be able to share what they feel and, uh, and, and give them a, a, a way to express. That's what it is, to express you know, their feelings and uh, be able to share uh, their dreams and their goals. Uh, we, we have a dynamic staff in college and career uh, that will help them uh, basically uh, line a pathway uh, for college or a career. And obviously for the, uh, the teens and uh, high school students, uh, one of the biggest challenges uh, was the dropout rate, particularly within uh, 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 students of color, right? Uh, black and Latino students dropping out uh, of school. Obviously uh, avenues like the Boys and Girls Club does help. Is it helping and what are you doing, uh, particularly in Atlanta City, uh, to make sure that those kids stay in school? I think one of the biggest things and one of our pushing campaigns is going to be that we let, let all the kids know that we're here. Within the 48 blocks of Atlantic City, there's 6,800 kids. Uh, we average about 300 kids or so during the week uh, through all of our campuses. And so our teen center, we certainly could welcome more, but teens are very busy. They got after school activities and uh, you know some kids, kids don't want to engage. And so we're looking for ways, uh, innovative ways to the, where kids can engage with us uh, by our programming, what we're offering, but more importantly, that they know that we're here that we're here to help them, regardless of if they're black, they're white, they're Latino, they're Bangladesh, we're here to help everyone. Um, and that's what, those who need us the most, we are really serious and committed about that. Um, we have new staff that, that are on board um, that is committed to the vision of seeing our kids grow. And um, I'm really excited about that. Now, uh, obviously there's always been a, uh, uh, a bit of a disparity within the, black and Latino students uh, in terms of uh, career opportunities, and you mentioned STEM earlier. Uh, tell me a little bit about what are you doing in that uh, 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 career development or workforce development space as well as STEM 
careers. Absolutely. So in STEM, uh, STEAM right now, what we're doing is offering, we have, uh, we were able to be able to bring on what we call an artist in residence. Uh, we were able to get a world renowned uh, artist, a performer. Uh, his name is Jerry Compare. He's a, a, an amazing musician. And so he's teaching theory and music and lyrics. And so, you know, kids want to be rappers. But before you can be a rapper, you got to understand lyrics. And so he's teaching the theory part of it and helping them understand that you may want to pursue a music career, but this will give you a foundation. And so we work in the even former choir. And so just give them opportunity to have outlets and be able to explore and see other uh, artistic forms. Um, in our STEAM, we also, right now, we have a group that are getting certification in Google. Uh, and how to be able to operate um, some Google um, mechanisms and softwares. There's always a lot going on. And then in our, in, with our smaller kids, our kids ages six through 12, um, they work with drones and Legos and, and ro robotics. And again, just giving them an opportunity to explore other things in the science, uh, sciences. Our older kids do uh, have taken classes in drone and aviation. We have uh, dual enrollment uh, with, with uh, colleges here in the area. Atlantic Cape College is one of them where we have 10 kids enrolled, uh, 30 kids all in. 10 kids in aviation, criminal justice, and in criminal justice. Oh, wow. okay. So it's given them that type of exposure um, and, and opportunity to be able to explore and see what, um, what, what they may want to do in life. Yeah. And some of those things does, does help the disparity, right, to, to have career choices. And I, I, I did uh, attend uh, uh, sort of a, um, an open house uh, with my son yeah. where uh, they broke up in a, in a little team, to, my son and two others, build a robot. But not only did they do the robot, they had to build a video and a story mm -hmm. around that monster that they created as a robot, right. which was exciting. You know, it was, it was really uh, uh, covering all the bases, so to speak, right? Ad addressing the creativity of the, the children, which is, which is great. Uh, tell me what you're most passionate about, about the Boys and Girls Club in Atlanta City. Wow, what am I most passionate about? I am passionate about seeing kids being fulfilled and that they possess their destiny. I am passionate about giving our youth everything they need to be successful. Every pathway, every opportunity, I, I, that's what my passion is, that they succeed. I, I read the, uh, the mission statement, which is uh, to inspire young people, especially those, those uh, uh, that need it the most, to reach their full potential as healthy, responsible, and productive citizens. Yes. Uh, you know, to what extent you feel you're, you're, you as a new executive director is helping to move that forward? Well, I think it just, again, that every day I show up that I'm my authentic, organic self uh, with energy and passion uh, for what I do, which is to see the kids succeed. Um, but I have to do that through great relationships with partners um, throughout the region and, and, and continue to tell our story and that we're making a difference in young people's lives. Yeah, I was talking to a young man today, and uh, he's in the aviation class, and he told me, he said, but I want to be a lawyer. I want to, I want to be a lawyer. And he's like, I, I want to go to Temple. And he's in the ninth grade. He was like, okay, great. Uh -huh. We can put you on the right path of that. Oh, that that's exciting. Now, uh, taking those, those type of kids, right, that already have a vision, uh, do you also uh, do some uh, work to, to link them up with mentors uh, to get them uh, started in those career choices. Absolutely, and that's one of the biggest things that will uh, be um, launched, I should say, in 2024, is a real serious passion of connecting with partners and leaders, uh, as we say, people that will be allies with us in the community um, that can come in and mentor our young people, uh, be able to t talk about life experiences, um, the, the good and the bad, the uh, so they can see that, you know, the, that nothing in life is easy, but because you made it, I know I can make it. So be encouraging uh, to, to the kids. I want to talk a little bit about some success stories and certainly uh, continue to talk a little bit about that passion uh, to make kids successful. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with more Latino Motion. On behalf of Latino Motion, happy holidays and Feliz Navidad. <laughs>
Welcome back to Latino Motion. We continue our discussion with Dr. Charles Wallace, Chief Executive Officer of the Boys and Girls Club of Atlanta City. Dr. Wallace, uh, you've done su such a great job here coming into this organization and certainly continue uh, the momentum of the Boys and Girls Club. I want to ask you about the future. And, uh, but before I get there, I want to talk about the uh, partnerships. You mentioned that throughout the interview here about the importance of partnerships. Tell me why that's so important for your organization. Well, it, 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 partnerships uh, help sustain us, let's be, be honest with it, between the, uh, the casino redevelopment, uh, Atlantic Care, Atlantic City Electric. Uh, I can go on and on of our partners uh, who help support us financially, which support us with volunteers. Uh, we're actually going to start a major campaign for volunteers and mentors um, because our kids need the, that's a program that, that, um, that we're forming now that we need mentors, uh, Hispanic mentors, black mentors, Asian mentors to be able to mentor our kids, um, to be able to show them as an example. But that's what partnership is about. Um, and again, it's exposure to different cultures. Um, and Atlantic City is, is an international city Absolutely. with a very diverse. And so we want to be able to, uh, for our kids to be able to see that. But uh, it's important that we have partnerships um, that will help lift the load. Um, we're, we're actually, we're looking, for, we're, we're in the process of needing a bus so that we can transport some of our teens from the Chelsea location to the teen location uh, down in, on Pennsylvania Avenue or some of our smaller kids. And so those are not, those aren't just, you know, small minimal expenses. Right. Well, that's a thirty-eight, forty thousand dollars $40,000 expense for a bus. Um, and so, you know, you have to factor those things in, which help us you know, be strategic in our direction where we're going as we're we're building a future that we can address and be able to reach Atlantic County, you know, Pleasantville, the kids in Pleasantville. They deserve structure. They deserve a program of youth development like we have at the Boys and Girls Club. So, so not to put you on the spot, but you're, you're talking about expanding and uh, you're, you're talking about having a, a bigger footprint for the uh, Greater Atlanta City. I've just named it Greater Atlanta City Boys and Girls Club. Greater Atlantic City. Well, again, we want to serve those who need us the most. And so you know, we know there's a need in Pleasantville. We know there's a need uh, even through Egg Harbor uh, and Northfield in those areas. To be, we want to be able to reach those who need us. And so uh, we will, again, be strategically thinking and planning um, and in that direction of what will we do in the future? Where will we, where will we expand? And that comes with making certain we have the staff that have capacity mm -hmm. and, and the capability of serving those, the, uh, that community. And uh, I'm excited about it. Uh, it's, it's a fun part of being a leader and creating vision um, and to be able to share our passion to see youth succeed and be the best people they can be. Uh, let's talk about the volunteering and donations, right? Because you still need uh, donations, and you mentioned even to expand, right? You need uh, uh, more support. But uh, to be a volunteer, uh, is there uh, a site that they could go to to uh, volunteer? Absolutely. Uh, you can go to our website, uh, www.acbgc.org, uh, or you can just send an email to volunteer at acbgc. Dot org, and someone will respond to you. Um, we, we have a form and application that we will ask that you fill out. Of course, working with children, there's background checks and um, other pro processes and procedures that must be followed uh, for the safety of our kids, because safety is the number one priority. Um, but then you come into the fold, and I can promise you it'll be a life-changing uh, opportunity to be able to make impact uh, and impartation into the young people. And uh, obviously to donate, uh, you could also reach out to the Boys and Girls Club. Absolutely, you can donate. We take donations. We do credit card, cash check, uh, and, and we're actually uh, setting up a, a legacy um, opportunity where people can be able to um, leave us in their will and leave us uh, something beyond um, once, once they have uh, departed. So we're excited. And I know there's a number of organizations. I know at Atlanta City Electric, uh, we do have powering communities where, and we have an annual giving campaign. Yes. So we could designate an agency uh, to give our donations. Right. I, I know that I've uh, designated the Boys and Girls Club. Um, I was a board member previously. My son attends the Boys and Girls Club. So I had a little bit of a passion right. around uh, wanting to help the Boys and Girls Club and certainly 
uh, helping the, 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 the city uh, right. grow. Uh, let me ask you, um, in terms of the future, you mentioned the expansion. Is there any new programs that you think are, are, are in need in Atlanta City uh, that you want to uh, engage in? I think one of the biggest things now is really uh, soliciting support for the mental health initiatives okay. um, because kids are going through a lot the parents have gone through a lot and when you got a kid going through a lot and a parent going through a lot that could make that house a little tense and, and so we, we're really working on programming that we can be able to provide services and be able to assist and bring comfort um, to those kids or kids that we serve from a mental health standpoint. Uh, one of, another initiative that we have I'm very excited about is that we will be taking our kids abroad this year. Um, right. In June, July, we're finalizing that destination. Um, but one of the goals is to be able to give them an opportunity to be immersed in a culture um, for a week. We're going to start out for a week okay. uh, and, and, and let them be able to experience another culture uh, abroad. So. Um, that, that we'll need funds for that as well. So please feel free to donate. That, that sounds exciting. How do you engage parents? And I know that uh, when parents send their kids to a program, Boys and Girls Club, and we'll talk about the summer program, um, uh, obviously uh, the parents need to be assured that their kids are going to be safe. Right. Parent engagement is of utmost importance. Boys and Girls Club of America, uh, number one priority is safety. Uh, we have a lot of processes and procedures in place, protocols, um, that make certain that our, our members are safe at all times um, and to make certain that parents feel their kids are safe when they give them to us. All of our staff is background checked. We have continual training, professional development, um, and, and learning new methods, best practices on how to be safe. Um, but our partnership with parents mean a lot. Uh, we're actually another campaign that we're starting to really engage with parents and involvement. We're not a babysitting service. And, and so parent involvement will be key because we may need your help and assistance uh, and, and maybe driving home a point when, when the little one gets home and says, hey, you need to study that math a little bit more. Here's some worksheets. Um, or or to be able to amplify them and celebrate them. It says, hey, Johnny did a great job today at school and he deserves blah, blah, blah. And so again, it's a partnership and collaboration between us and the parents mean everything because we're a team. And I know that uh, we're in winter right now and p perhaps parents aren't thinking about summer school, but your program is an after school program currently, but you also have a summer and we got 30, 30 seconds. Tell me about that summer program. Absolutely, we have the best summer program in the city. Uh, it's an eight week program it's, and it's from nine to five. And our kids do fun activities. There's also an academic enrichment part of our summer camp, um, but they stay busy. Uh, we do trips uh, throughout the region uh, to water parks, uh, natural preserve, uh, reserve, preserves, uh, canoeing trips. Uh, I mean, I think one of the clubs last year had uh, air gun. It, they have a lot of fun. It, so much so it, it makes you want to be a kid again. <laughs> but more importantly, we do it in a safe environment. We do it in a nurturing environment. Uh, and parents can feel assured that when they leave us with their kids, that the kids are going to learn something and they're going to have a great time and um, they become better people. Well, Dr. Wallace, thank you so much. Very nice having you. I'm sure we'll have you back thank soon. You. Pleasure and, being here. And thank you for joining us once again here on Latino Motion. Funding for Latino Motion is provided by Atlanticare. For more information, call 1-888-569-1000 or visit atlanticare.org. Atlantic City Electric, energy for a changing world.
and South Jersey Gas. On behalf of Latino Motion, happy holidays y feliz Navidad. <laughs> Happy holidays, right Oreo?